So you want to know how to fix golfer's elbow? Well, in today's video, we are going to take you through some really, really important processes and the best treatment methods. We're also going to talk a little bit about New South Wales dominating Queensland last night in the state of origin. And uh, we're going to share one concept that will completely revolutionize your training, whether it's that you're rehabbing an injury or just trying to get absolutely swole. Either way, this is key. We're gonna reveal that towards the end of this video. All that and more coming up right after this. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image. Good evening or good day, depending on where you are in the world. In case we haven't met, my name's Rad Burmeister. This is my brother, Yanni Burmeister, and we are the co-founders and co-creators of Unity Gym and the Foundation Movement System, where we teach you how to nourish and move instead of diet and exercise. And we've got an awesome show coming up for you today. This is without a doubt one of the hottest topics that we ever get asked about. It's the video that's had the biggest hits on our channel, is how to fix golfer's elbow. And I would dare say, that we are experts at this, not because we're physiotherapists, not because we're nutritionists, but because we've <laughs> dealt with it ourselves and we have uh, personally all overcome golfer's elbow. My golfer's elbow got so bad that I couldn't even, when I would hang, I couldn't even pull myself to there without being in excruciating pain and I couldn't do any form of loaded elbow flexion for at least six to nine months, I would say. It was very, very bad and now I don't have any symptoms anymore. Yeah, I, look, I, my, my uh, story with golfer's elbow, we talk about, uh, I, I refer to golfer's elbow or tennis elbow, medial or um, lateral epicondylitis as um, gym herpes. It's very hard to get rid of once you contract it and uh, it's, a, it's very frustrating, you know. Uh, it, it, uh, there's another side to this story and it's funny, I'm writing this program right now, our, a super accumulation program and I'm doing a lot of research for that and a lot of the top strength coaches in the world and I'm talking you know arguably some of the best guys in the world really believe that if uh, if an athlete doesn't complain of tendonitis at some point they're not training hard enough uh, and I kind of feel like there is some truth in that I know that it's not um, it's not I, well we don't like to associate pain in in the success of your training like these guys do but I certainly believe that uh, some form of overuse injury is just a part of your journey. Like I haven't met anyone who's really, really crushed their physical goals that hasn't experienced it at some point. And there is, um, you know, Rad will say in a moment that it's a specialization injury and it's because you're doing too much of one thing. And I totally agree with that. But I also don't know if, uh, if, if it's 100% avoidable. I don't, I, I just don't see, I, I've never met anyone I'll who's made it through their training life and not experience some form of tendonitis, whether it's somewhere like the patella tendon in the knee, whether it's the uh, forearms, whether it's the shoulder, the supraspinatus tendon in the rotator cuff. I, I, I really thoroughly believe it's just a part of training and, uh, and it's something that you need to learn a good strategy with. Maintenance, muscle maintenance, you have to have a strategy for. What are you, you smiling and you've got this coffee look on your face. <laughs> well, I can I'll tell see. you what is 100% avoidable, that fucking coffee. That is uh, absolute shit, that coffee. We've got to get something <laughs> new. Because <laughs> I'll be avoiding that in the future. What? <laughs> was just you rubbish. were waiting for that to come out the whole time. I could see this bloody smile of, uh, on your face about, just I going. I kept thinking about a couple of movies. Anyway. Um, so what were we talking about? Golfer's elbow. Golfer's elbow. Yeah, look, it is, um, uh, I, I agree and I disagree. I'd have to say, I don't like to say, oh, yep, yeah, if you don't get tendonitis at some stage, you're not training hard enough. I don't like to say that, but the truth is, I, I, that's what our experience has been. Yeah. I don't know anybody that has trained at a high level. It's, that, I'm not saying they're not out there, but I don't know them that haven't developed some form of tendonitis at some stage. And... Tendonitis is an overuse injury. That's that's what it comes from. It comes from an abusive load on on the tendons, and that's really the sign that you need to uh, change the way you're doing things and focus more on 
you know, uh, conditioning your tendons and not just trying to get stronger and stronger and stronger yeah. in certain things. The unfortunate um, um, truth to all of this is that most of us don't condition our bodies properly until we need to, and then it's too late. Because once you experience an overuse injury like tendinopathy in uh, a, a part of your, like the medial or epicondyle, which is a very thin part of the muscle body that is doing a high level of work, um, it's very hard to get rid of. And I mean, what do you do in everyday life where you're not using your forearms you're not, or your fingers to grip something? It's very little, you know? So you can't even come in and smash a leg day uh, because you've got to load the barbell with plates and that's using your forearms and it's going to aggravate that tissue. Mm. So this is why it's, uh, it's unfortunate. Like when you come in in the foundation movement system, we have this, uh, this great foundations program where we force people to do all of this forearm conditioning and all this sort of stuff. But a lot of the time they're coming to us because they're already injured. They've already suffered that abusive load, whether it's a it's single occurrence or multiple occurrences that they ignored over time. Mm. And that's just the reality of it. So where do we go from there? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, the, the precipice of today's show is because um, one of our viewers... Uh, and he's a subscriber too, because he gets my, new, my um, daily vlogs and blogs that I write based on these shows. Uh, Joshua Dorr has written to us saying um, he, he thinks we're awesome. Thank you, Joshua. Uh, big fan of gymnastic strength training, but a couple of months ago, he nailed his right elbow and haven't done a pull-up since. Uh, he's got a, he works with a trainer, and that trainer has suggested that he buy what's called a TheraBand Flex. He's been doing small exercises to strengthen uh, the forearms, triceps, etc., but he still has a lot of pain. Now, here's the thing. First of all, big shout out, Josh. Um, thank you for the question. Uh, we're going to do everything we can to help you out, brother. I said to you in the email response, I'd rather do a show or a video about it rather than just write you a really long-winded email. And I was doing that, and then I thought, bugger that, I can give you more value by doing this. So that's, that's where we are. Now, the problem with this TheraBand Flex, let's have a quick, maybe you guys haven't seen this before, so can we play the video? This is the first thing you will find if you search TheraBand Flex in Google is this video. And this is a demonstration by a company that are either uh, affiliated with the you company. Play the video while we're talking. Yep, yep, yep. You're playing it now? Uh -huh. Yeah, so what you guys are watching here is the use of this tool. It's a, it's a, um, a rubber uh, device that you can sort of twist. It, it looks quite phallic in that video. I did not choose that video. I didn't video. think of that at all, that Yanni made that connection <laughs> just for the record. So I didn't choose that video because of the, 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 um, the, the nature of it and how sus it looked. I chose that video because it's literally the first thing you get when you when you search the term TheraBand Flex. We're, we get a delay on my screen down here and we're watching it now and it's hard not to laugh. Um, but the, the concept of what she's doing in there is, is sound, it's, it's quite good. But there's one huge problem with that video. And that is that there is absolutely no room or they, they may make harder different tolerances of the device, but there's very little room for progressive overload. Why don't you explain a little bit about the concept of progressive, the principle of progressive overload. This is a topic that we cover in length in our Strength Essentials uh, mini course uh, that I'm working on. So it's very fresh in my mind, but well, it's something that we, uh, we really live by here. Mm. So at the most basic level to understand tendonitis is it's an abusive load to the tendons, which means you've overdone it. So that's the simplest way to describe it. You've done too much of one thing and you've now caused inflammation in the tendons and if it goes further than that, it starts turning into micro tears. So the first thing that you have to do is you have to remove the abusive load so that you allow the inflammation to subside and you have to start a progressive overload rehabilitation process. And that's the key thing. Progressive overload is this idea where each week you progressively are overloading the body. You're not going from leaps and bounds. So uh, a really bad way to train is that you train really, really hard one or two weeks and then you don't do anything at all for a week and then you train really, really hard again for two weeks and then you have a really soft week and then you go hard. And so your training's just going like this. The much better way to train would be that you, you're intensity goes up and up and up week by week by week and then maybe you back off just a little bit and then you go up and up and up again like that rather than going up and down like this so this is where everybody gets it wrong with injuries and especially with tendonitis is that they think 
um, because we've been told for so long that if you, if you get injured, one of the first things you do is rest. And for most injuries, that is um, a really important thing to do. You need to... I'll make a clip. Oh, I just spat everywhere. I'll make a key definition. If it is a... Uh, there's different levels of tear, and, and tendonitis is a tear to a degree. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a series of micro tears, but it's a, a damage to the tissue. If it's a severe tear, grade one or grade two tear, then rest is the absolute protocol yeah, that course, you need yeah. to do. But and the continue. early onset of tendonitis is not a tear, is not a grade one or grade two tear yet. It's more about inflammation and micro tears. So if you sprain your ankle or if you tear one of the muscles in your rotator cuff or something like that, then you absolutely need to rest first. You need to reduce the inflammation. But with tendonitis, it's not like that. What you need to do is you need to remove the abusive load, allow the inflammation to go down and start a, a progressive approach <coughs> to it. And this is where people get it wrong because what they do is they stop training, rest, the pain goes away because the inflammation goes down, but the damage is still there. It hasn't been repaired yet. And then they go straight back to doing what they were doing before and they experience pain. So this idea of this progressive overload approach is you have to, there's a whole series of things that you have to do, which we're going to talk about. And it starts with isometric contractions and then goes through concentric contractions and then to eccentric contractions. They're the ones that put the most uh, load on the on the tendons and it's all about being progressive. So it's about recognizing that you were training here, this is where you caused the injury. We're gonna drop back down to here and now we're gonna go step by step to slowly get you back up to here. And that's where most people get it wrong. And that's where we bring in what's called the issue intensity continuum, which I'm going to go out and show you now. Now, we'll go out on the gym floor if Richie's ready. Um, and. Uh, what I'll get you to do, can you find your old broomstick that has the lines on it? I'd like to just show them, um, to, to show them how you've done Before it. Before we go out, because I'm not going to be able to talk in a minute. Um, You'll be able to talk, but you'll look like it's hugging be, me. It's going to be a tragedy. Um, what we're about to show you, this is the same thing for golfer's elbow or tennis elbow, so medial or lateral epicondylitis. The, the strategy is the same. The only thing that's different is the exercise selection. So there'll be the exercises that we're going to focus on today are for golfer's elbow, but this whole strategy is exactly the same. Yep. It's just that uh, with golfer's elbow, you focus on forearm flexion movements, whereas with tennis elbow, you fo focus on forearm pronation movements and also um, bicep flexion movements. But, and also what... Um what Josh is saying here that a lot of the pain is uh, what I gather from his um, short email is in the triceps and that's v it's actually very very common guys when you uh, get a, an injury an overuse injury in here it's often big problems above the elbow too not it doesn't just stop at the medial or lateral epicondyl that uh, is on the lower portion of the um, remind, me, of the remind me to talk about that when we come back yeah that's that, right. I'm gonna round it off by finishing uh, this by talking about the concept of, of strengthening your entire body not just yeah. one part yeah so let's head out why don't you talk about the issue tends yep. to yep. and can you just gather up the uh, the club bells as well, just as a demo, um, and some light dumbbells. The broomstick, the broomstick is going to be better now. I'll get the dumbbells. Yeah, okay. I'll get the kettlebells to show you how to massage the arm as well. Also grab the, uh, grab the arm aid just to show them. We won't set it up, but we'll just give them a demo. Okay, so this is like, for, for any of you guys that are suffering injuries out there, this is a revelation, and I really mean that. I don't throw that word around that often, but this was taught to me by one of the best physios in the world, arguably. He's been involved in some of the top, um, he was a physio, worked with the LA Lakers in the States. He's been, re, mo, most recently been working for GWS Giants in Australia in the AFL, which is like the uh, equivalent to NFL in America. Uh, and he is now involved in developing a huge program for called AFL Fit. Um, I'm referring to Leroy Lobo. If you ever watch our show, Leroy, I do give you credit for this. Uh, what, happen, what needs to happen here? We've got a very simple square. Across the top, we have two from zero to 10 scales in reverse. So the issue starts from the right at a zero and goes to a 10 out of 10. A 10 out of 10 is incapacitated. You can no longer move that limb, joint or muscle, okay? A zero is zero injury whatsoever. At the bottom, we have a scale from zero to 10 going in the reverse direction. This is the intensity of training, okay? If you have a 10 and you're incapacitated, then you do not do any training. And that would refer to when you've got a stage one muscle tear. So that's rest, okay? At the other end of the spectrum here, if you have no issue, 
You can train at a 10 out of 10 intensity and you can take the muscle to muscle failure or neuromuscular failure, which is creating a massive amount of metabolic damage to the tissue because there is no existing damage to the tissue. There's no pre-existing issue. If you have any issue at all, you should be training in alignment with the issue. So let's say you have a, an ongoing postural issue in your shoulder and you know that your shoulder is rounded and you've got slight impingement of the rotator cuff and your issue is a two out of 10. It's not always painful, but when you train, it's a little bit painful. You should not be training over an eight out of 10. You always are on the issue, the blue line in the middle is what's referred to as the issue intensity continuum, okay? So, you are always plotting a course somewhere on the issue intensity continuum. If most people that I know sit around this mark here, they sit from a zero to a two on the issue spectrum. There's very few people I know that have issues. Rad has an issue right now. He has a, a labrum tear and a muscle tear in his right shoulder. So his issue is probably around a four. So he's training at a six. He's not training at a 10. Now we all want to train and, at a and, 10. And, and, and two months ago, it was more about here. Yeah, it that's was, right. I was at about a nine or an eight or a nine. I, was, I, could barely lift, I could barely lift my arm. I was about an eight or a nine two months ago. And so I had to slowly work my way up and it's been a progressive thing and I'm probably actually still and, only at about a five. And that's the most important thing. The concept of progressive overload with the issue intensity continuum is how you approach training all of the time. All of the time. When you're at a 10 out of 10 on the intensity scale, that just means that you use intra and interset overload variables to improve progression. So meaning supersets, drop sets, um, volume um, undulations, all this sort of stuff that you can use, intensity undulations. We have um, behind us here a graph on our wall that it, uh, for our members, which is the concept of supercompensation. And as long as you follow the supercompensation principles when you're on a 10 out of 10, you'll always improve and you'll always gain strength and muscle size performance, whatever you're trying to do. Um, just no. get Kalisha to help out with this guy. So this is, this is, the, big, this is the big lesson that people need to understand. It's very, very important. Uh, you must... You, yeah, just, just pop them down there, that's fine. Uh, we're sorry guys, we just have a delivery that's popped in here. Um, you must understand the concept of the issue intensity continuum. If you don't, say, let's say we, we we're in Rad's situation here. So we're in Rad's situation here, okay? So he gets a 9 out of 10 injury. He's, he's you know, torn his labrum, he's torn his rotator cuff, he comes down to a 1. He starts his rehab on a one, and he starts pretty much immediately. We know how to reintroduce stimulus at a level one. Most people need to go to a physiotherapist for this section here. This is where physios are brilliant at diagnosing and getting you from a zero back to a two or a three. But most physical therapists and physiotherapists, unless they've got skin in the game and they're used to training, they're used to training in a strength and conditioning environment, they won't really know how to get you from a three back to a 10. But they're very, very important down here. I would say critical. We've we, we, we got a lot to get through. Let's okay. go through this. But the last thing to say here, is really this is where everybody gets it wrong because they go and do this with a physio then they get released from physio skip all of that and go straight back to there yeah and that's where everybody gets it wrong you need to know how to fill in that gap there so so let's give you a quick example of that before we get out and show you some of the rehab theory you develop a golfer's elbow by doing lots of bicep curls and chin-ups you, it gets so bad that you can no longer do bicep curls and chin-ups without excruciating pain during and after the exercise. It's now turned to a tendinosis, which is a remodeling of the tissue. The tissue is shortening. It's getting um, overrun with scar tissue and the scar tissue just keeps tearing because it's not as malleable as muscle tissue. You've got a serious problem and without uh, an operation. The next, the next trip after physio for you is surgical intervention where they actually have to remove that tissue. Now, the, or cut it and open it up. 
The, uh, the thing you do is you go to the physio, they get you from a zero to a two with rehab, with tissue, massage, release, whatever they do. They might do Graston's technique, ART, um, gentle massage, needling, laser is very good too, uh, infrared, infrared laser. <coughs> and now you come back to the gym pain free and you start to try to do bicep curls and chin ups again. And what's going to happen? You're going to, f within a week, you're going to be back to square one. You're going to completely destroy all of that tissue again. And this is what Rad's talking about. When you're at a three or a four, bicep curls and chin ups are certainly not the exercise for you. That will just recreate an abusive load. So where do we go from there? Let's go through some rehab exercises. Rad's got this broomstick here. Uh, does it still have all your lines on it? Oh, it does, yeah. So just come in and have a look at this quickly. See all these little lines here? And Rad can explain to you what this is and why he chose to do a broomstick. Well, I need you. <clears throat> oh, yeah, yeah. So the, the broomstick is really good because you've got a, a, a weight at the end here, which is very, um, you can control it really easily. So what I do, I've, I've found the point where, so to start with, you always start with isometrics. So I was just holding an isometric hold like this and I'd do that and then the next week I'd go a little bit further. And so those marks were my reference for where it was that I was meant to be holding it so that I was progressively overloading it. And then you go to concentrics, which in the case of a tennis elbow from here would mean that I would come up and then I'd help lower it back down and then I'd come up again and then help lower it back down. And then finally you go to eccentrics, which means not only do you come up, but you also go back down slowly because the majority of the damage that comes to uh, muscles and tendons actually happens on the eccentric loading. So that's the last the, part that the, we do. The, the th out of the three contractions, the one that creates the most metabolic damage, which is where, what you're gonna feel afterwards, delayed onset muscle soreness, all of that is the eccentric contraction. So we use that last. Okay. <coughs> what we also have to do, because remember, if you've gone to a, ten, a tendinosis uh, a, a, or a tendinopathy, there's going to be tissue remodeling that needs to occur and we need to soften it up because you end up with this scar tissue which is much harder, more dense and less malleable than muscle tissue itself. So, we, and it's, it's a, a different chemical compound. The proteins actually change inside the muscle tissue. It remodels itself. So we use things like kettlebells. Uh, we have uh, over here what's called an arm aid, which we purchased. And these are quite cool. They're a little bit of a hassle to set up. And I'll be honest, uh, we don't use it nearly as much as we use the kettlebells and the barbells. But the idea is that it straps to your leg. You've got different heads that you can use and you use these balls here. Uh, uh, there's interchangeable heads that you can use to massage the area. It's a, it's a great concept and they work really well. They're about 230 odd dollars uh, Australian, about 150 or 120 US uh, for the kit. But we use the kettlebells and the barbells to roll them really easily. We also use uh, a, a series of massage balls and these things have been really great to get in and soften the tissue. Uh, and you're basically just trying to get blood to the surface. You're trying to remodel the tissue. Okay, what are we doing now? Well, just the golfer's elbow. We're just demonstrating the way that you do, uh, you might want to say, okay, yep. an isometric contraction. Yep, so what Rad's doing so, now... Sorry, I'll just say this quickly because you only need to know what I was doing. For, but the, for, for golfer's elbow, the thing that you want to be focusing on the most is forearm flexion like this, which means you start with isometrics, then you'd have to do one arm at a time because you do concentrics and then you lower down then concentric and then lower down. Whereas with tennis elbow, it's more about pronation that you're doing. Yeah. You're and these little nuances, guys, that you're watching, like you're sitting there going, fuck, do I really need to lower it down? Absolutely yes, because the eccentric contraction is gonna create another abusive load. And it's in those small little bits uh, that, that the magic is gonna occur either for you or against you. You have to understand that these tendons have been injured to quite a large degree and jumping into another abusive load is not the right thing to do. But surprisingly, when you've got a tendinopathy, it's the worst thing you can do or almost as bad as abusing the load again is not doing anything because the tissue just hardens and hardens and becomes more and more like scar tissue. 
So you've got to get that tissue remodeled and back to a muscular state where it's malleable, pliable, it's got good blood flow rushing through it to heal it and all of that sort of thing. And so doing nothing at all is one of the worst things you can do. It's, uh, we, we found that quite surprising when we worked with really good physios. They said, no, God, no. You've got to get into the gym straight away, but you've just got to make sure that what you do is in line with where your issue is. Otherwise, you screw it up again, okay? And that's really the big lesson. Let's wrap this up in the office now. So if you want to know more about golfers, about exercise selection, like that's the whole theory of it and everything. But, and if you want to know more about the exercise selection and the way that we've done it, we've got some really, really good videos. Yanni will put a link in the description I'll, I'll link. of this. We've done three. Like this is, we're really going over um, uh, old ground here because we've produced a whole series of videos on, on, on rehabbing golfer's elbow and tennis elbow before, but we've had a lot of questions coming in recently about it, and um, uh, I thought, bugger it, we'll do another, we'll do another video, yeah, sure. and and, uh, and also to to help out Josh here because he did reach out to us, and whenever someone reaches out to us personally, we want to make sure that we go over and above to uh, to help them out. So. I think what I really want to impart, if we impart any wisdom at all today, it is on the, 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 the marriage between the issue intensity continuum and the concept or the principle of progressive overload. Uh, you have to understand that progressive overload is, is like so, so important. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I want to add another chapter in the uh, Strength Essentials um, training on the issue intensity continuum I haven't done that I left it out completely anyway guys that's pretty much all we've got time for do you have anything else you want to cover well only that every we just finished our muscle up masterclass flash sale last um, week and as always as we always do with these flash sales we get an abundance of people emailing us afterwards say, saying that they missed out and they want us to uh, you know to, to give them the discounted rate um, we're very, very um, strict with our with our flash sale windows. When we we want to be people of integrity, and we we don't. And we, I mean, some we get these borderline abusive emails from people sometimes saying that they're really upset that we would have a sale and we're not going to make it available to them and isn't that what business is about but the truth is it is it, of course it's about making money but at the same time if we say to our audience you've only got this amount of time to get it and people you know some people are really moving heaven and earth to make it happen it's not right to them if we just then make it available to anybody for the time afterwards that said we've had so many people this year saying when can I get the 18 minute routine when can I this when can I that so we've got a really big and exciting sale for coming up for you guys in July. We've never announced a sale this uh, early, but basically we're going to do all of our online programs for 50% off as a Christmas in July for three days. We haven't announced the dates yet, but we're giving you fair warning. We're going to be letting you guys know when it's coming up and that's going to be your best opportunity. We've never get. done this before either. Yeah, uh, yeah, we've never done this and I had an idea of doing it for Good Friday and Cyber Monday, uh, but uh, we've decided to do it in July because we've just had so many people reach reaching out to us and um, uh, it's hard to ignore. Yeah. So any of our program, doesn't matter which one you want, we're going to release a discount code and you'll just be able to go straight to our uh, site where we have all of our programs, enter the discount code and get 50% off any program. And I'm going to have the Strength Essentials ready for that too. So the Strength Essentials mini course, which is usually sold at $149 with all of this stuff, all of these concepts in it, it really is the backbone to our program. Uh, that's going to be available to the public. We were initially only going to reserve that for our uh, for our online movement mastermind tribe, but they get it for free, and uh, you guys have to pay for it if you're not a client. <laughs> it's the way the world works. Yeah. Uh, they don't that's get it. it for free. They subscribe uh, on a monthly subscription. Anyway, guys, that's it. Look out for it, and uh, I will. Yeah, but we got a lot of questions coming in on the on the um, golfer's elbow, so I'm going to get stuck into answering all of these for you guys over the uh, next uh, day or so. But we start our super accumulation program today uh, here, or at least I do, and a bunch of our Movement Mastermind tribe. So I'll be uh, reaching out to all of you guys soon. This is a big program. I'm looking forward to it. I'm very excited. This is me excited. <laughs> <laughs> See you tomorrow, everyone. Health is about performance, not just body image. You better be willing to accept what you're going to have to do to get there. 
people. Start focusing on movement goals, strength goals, flexibility goals. When you nail that skill, that's there forever. The body image goal doesn't get you that far. It's the consistency and frequency that's gonna get you there. It's not the intensity. There's no shortcuts to mastery and movement. Destination doesn't change overnight, but your direction will. It's the gym is not the place to beat up the body that you hate. It's the place to build the body that you love. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image.